Hello, I'm Kevin McCann. I'm Masaki Soda. Today we'd like to speak to you about our new paper, A Primary Role for the Nucleus Accumbens and Related Network in Vocal Ticks. Tret syndrome is a chronic neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by ticks. When ticks occur in the face or extremities, for example blinking or shrugging the shoulder, they are called motor ticks. When ticks are audible, for example, clearing the throat, they are called vocal tics. Vocal tics can take complex forms, such as expressing obscene words in public, and so it can severely impact quality of life. Kevin and I have previously developed a non-human primate model of the tic disorder. We injected a drug called bicuclin, which is a GABA antagonist into the motor territory of the ptamen, based on the hypothesis that tick disorders would be caused by abnormalities of the motor loop in cortical basal ganglion networks. In that model, animals express motor ticks, primarily in the face and arm region. However, vocal ticks never occurred. We therefore hypothesized that vocal ticks might in fact be a consequence of abnormalities in the limbic system. We used a combination of CT, MRI guided electrophysiology to target a critical node within the limbic system, a region called the nucleus accumbens. Once the injectrode was in position and the GABA antagonist perfused, animals began to display periodic vocalizations that resembled grunts. As these vocalizations were similar in sound to grunts produced by normal animals, we considered them to be analogous to complex vocal tics as seen in human tic disorders. Once tic states had been induced, it was possible to image global brain activity using radio labeled water as a measure of regional cerebral blood flow, RCBF. During expression of motor tics, changes to RCBF were confined to the ipsilateral side of the ejected hemisphere, primarily within the sensory motor corticobasal ganglia network. During the expression of vocal tics, a rather different pattern emerged. Injections delivered to one hemisphere caused bilateral activation in the deep nuclei of the brain, including the hippocampus and amygdala, while increased activity in the cortex was focused on the anterior cingulate region, especially area 24C. In the model we developed before, in which only motor tics were evoked, electrophysiological recordings showed a number of local field potential spikes, or LFP spikes, in the primary motor cortex and ptamen, which constitutes the motor territory of cortical basal ganglion networks. Importantly, those LFP spikes phase-free appeared every time motor tics occurred. However, neuronal recordings in the vocal tic model have provided a different picture. In the case of vocalization, LFP spikes were observed in the ACC and the nucleus accumbens, which were often associated with the emergence of vocal tics. In other occasions, however, vocal tics occurred without any detectable LFP spikes. The emergence of vocal tics without any obvious LFP abnormality meant that there must be another mechanism which can drive vocalization. In order to investigate this further, we used an analysis of the spectral properties within the LFP signal. Initially, LFP spikes that were definitively associated with vocal tics were extracted and power spectral densities calculated. This analysis showed there was a significant peak in the alpha 7 to 12 Hz range. This peak, however, was absent when grunts emerged without LFP spikes. We then tried a different analysis on regions where vocal tics occurred without LFP spikes called phase-phase coupling. The results of the coupling analysis showed that there was significant interaction between the nucleus accumbens and anterior cingulate cortex in the alpha frequency range. This suggests that alpha coupling might be a more reliable measure of tic generating signals. Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoyed the paper. Thank you.